Hi, and welcome back to Checkmate the Matrix. And now we are going on to, let's say, say our last uh, segment of the debt and chasing the DCAs into the wilderness. So we've went through the system before. We started off with the first SAR, subject access request. Then we went to the second one, which was that warning and we're going to report them to the ICO, make a complaint. Then we did the ICO complaint. Right. The step four was sending them the letter before claim, which needs to be done for civil procedure rules. So that's the steps. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give them one last bite of the cherry. We call it the intent to prosecute. So it is the last notice. You give them the intent to prosecute and then you're going to actually um, file the N1. It is good to run it like that so that you can show that you've been giving them all the opportunity to come forward with the correct documentation the legally executed deed of assignment. That is what we're asking for. Not a deed of assignment, but the legally executed deed of assignment. Remember, we're concentrating 100% on GDPR and DPA 2018. We're not going to argue about the debt. We're not going to argue about the validity of the debt. We're not going to argue about where the money came from. Did the banks convert it to a promissory note? We're not interested in that. That's not what this game is. That's a different argument. We're concentrating 100% on the tools they gave us, which is GDPR and DPA 2018. They are concealing our data if they are not going to show us the legally executed deed of assignment. Now, remember, if they have turned around to you and said, we have purchased your debt, you now owe us. You have to pay direct to us. Well, if they have bought it, then they must have a receipt for it, which is, if it was real, the legally executed deed of assignment. And we know that they don't have that because they only deal in blocked data. It's far too complicated and expensive for them to go and do. Can imagine they're going to, how many thousands of people that actually go into default and get sent to debt collectors for not paying a credit card, not paying a, a bank loan every single day. So these debt companies simply can't do it. Now, I have seen a video from an insider, a debt collection insider showed the, the websites where they go on and it's like bidding on these debts, these blocks of debts. So what they do is they buy the big block and then they divide it geographically and then they start attacking all the people to get the repayments. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to concentrate on GDPR because if anybody has your data, doesn't matter if it's a debt collection company or anything, whatever it was, whatever it would be, okay, a school, the council, the police, anything, they have to supply you with all data held on you. Now, the good thing for us is that what they've said when they are alleging or they're telling you point blank they've purchased your debt, they're making a claim. And that claim is that they have a legally executed deed of assignment. So we're being very specific on our SAR, the subject access request. We're not going to ask them 3,400 questions. All we're doing is saying, look, I want that legally executed deed of assignment. Maybe a couple of other questions as well to fill it up a bit, but very specific. All right. You're only asking for the data all around that legally valid deed of assignment, which is a big problem for them because they haven't got it. So we've shown you uh, on the, the evidence they're coming through when they did the 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 live with Richie when he was actually supposed to be getting taken to court by PRA group and they gave him the deed of assignment and it was just blank. And a couple that we've had as well, exactly the same, just blank. That's not legally executed deed of assignment. So in his case, he won a default judgment because they simply didn't turn up, even though they booked the court date. So they didn't pay the fee and they didn't actually turn up. They didn't supply any evidence to the court. Therefore, he won by default, which now allows him to go make a counterclaim. So what we're doing is we're actually going to stop the whole procedure of them chasing you forever and ever. And then you're going to try and battle them off with this notice, battle them off with that notice. And then they take you to court. And then you can hopefully you've got like the, the, the means to actually defend it, as we've shown you. But this is just going to reverse it, make it quicker. And we're going to chase them instead. So what we're doing is we're using the SCR. Then we do <clears throat> the second one is to tell them that we're going to send them a complaint to the ICO. We're complaint to the ICO, letter before claim, and then the intent to pr uh, prosecute, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so I'll read this out to you. We'll just go over it and I'll attach it onto the video so you can get your own as well. 
So it starts off the same. Our address is on the right hand side. The left hand side is the uh, debt collector. So we have the date and then notice of intent to prosecute. Now remember, this is we're dealing in a legal world here. We're, we're doing everything by the book legally. We don't have to put down, you know, notice to agent, notice to principal, principal notice, and your next door neighbor's dog's uncle, right? It's just notice of intent to prosecute. That's all we need to put. Then we're going to have our alleged account number. Uh, and then it's coming in. We are writing to formally notify you of my intent to pursue legal action against your organization in light of your repeated and persistent failure to provide requested information in compliance with the law and our data protection rights. As you are aware, we have submitted multiple subject access requests, SARs, and a letter before action to request information concerning the alleged debt associated with account reference number, whatever it is. Specifically, we have sought details of the legally executed deed of assignment under Section 1 of the Law of Property Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1989 and Section 136 of the Law of Property Act 1925, which outline the legal requirements of the assignment of the debt to be valid. These requests are made pursuant to my rights under the General Data Protection Regulations, GDPR, and Data Protection Act 2018, and the Financial Conduct Authority Regulations Principles 6 and 7. Despite ample opportunity to rectify your non-compliance and provide the requested information, you have continued to disregard our lawful requests. This failure not only impedes our ability to evaluate the validity of the debt, but also raises significant concerns about your organization's adherence to data protection laws and industry regulations. Therefore, this notice of intent to prosecute serves as for formal warning that we intend to initiate legal proceedings against your organization to enforce our rights and seek redress for your non-compliance. Legal action may include, but is not limited to the following, seeking a court order compelling the disclosure of the requested information, pursuing damages for any harm or distress, distress caused by your organization's failure to comply with legal obligations, filing a complaint with the Information Commissioner's Office and the FCA regarding your data protection practices. This notice provides your organization with a final opportunity to rectify the situation before we proceed with legal action. You are hereby given seven days from the date of this notice to provide the requested information in full compliance with data protection laws and regulations. Failure to meet this deadline will leave us with no alternative but to commence legal proceedings without further notice. We will take all necessary steps to protect our rights, seek redress and, ens and ensure that your organisation is held accountable for its non-compliance. We urge you to take this matter seriously, remedy your non-compliance and provide the necessary information promptly. We are committed to upholding our rights and pursuing the appropriate legal remedies should they become necessary. All rights reserved without prejudice. Now, when we're putting without prejudice in, normally what I would have had in there, I would have actually made an offer saying you may settle without going to court for, and I would do it for about 50%, say like two, two and a half thousand pounds um, instead of me filing actually in the court. So that's when you would actually have without prejudice. And if you haven't got made the offer, then you would actually just take the without prejudice off. So once you've actually served the notice of intent to prosecute, then what you're going to do, you're going to give them seven days. And then after that, you're going to file the M1 and you're going to have all your evidence in a row. So when you're doing the M1, you have to have it noted down exactly as you've done it. Here's the SCR. There's the response. Second SCR and so on and so on and so on. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go over a checklist now uh, and I'll give you the information as well on how we move it up to the high court once we get the CCJ, because they don't have this evidence. They have not got the legally executed deed of assignment. So what they'll do is very likely what they've done with Richie is just not turn up. So we get the default judgment. The default judgment, we can move up to the high court and get a high court writ, which means we can have it enforced with more power and faster. But let's go through that checklist and I'll read it out to you now. So here's a checklist. Outlining the steps for taking a debt collector to court for concealment of your data, which is what they've done. Number one, a subject access request. The first one, send a formal SAR to the debt collector requesting all personal data they hold about you, including any documents related to the alleged, the alleged debt, such as the legally executed deed of assignment. Step two, 
Second SAR with the ICO warning. If the debt collector fails to respond to the initial SAR within the specified time frame, send the second SAR with a warning that you will report their non-compliance to the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO. Then you report them to the ICO. File a complaint. If the debt collector still does not comply with the SAR requests, file a complaint with the ICO outlining the failure to provide the requested information. Number four, letter before claim. Send a formal letter before claim to the debt collector, clearly stating your intention to take legal action if they do not comply with your SAR requests and provide the necessary documentation, including the legally executed deed of assignment. Number five, and the last notice, intent to prosecute, the one I've just read out. If the debt collector ignores the letter before claim or refuses to comply with your requests, send a final notice stating your intent to prosecute them for breach of data protection laws and concealment of data. That's what they're doing. They're concealing your data by not giving you what they said that they had. Number six, file the N1 with the court. Prepare and file an N1 claim form with the court outlining your case against the debt collector for breach of your data protection laws. Include all evidence of your SR requests correspondence with the debt collector, ICO complaints, and any other relevant documentation. That would include, by the way, any reply you had, because you would want to show the reply that wasn't compliant. Where is the deed, the legally executed deed of assignment? All they've sent back is a load of nonsense, which you, if you've dealt with them before, you'll know. Clearly outline the debt collector's failure to comply with the SER by using their responses, SER requests and provide the legally required documentation, such as the legally executed deed of assignment. Attach copies of all correspondence and evidence to support your claim. Ensure you send a request under CPR 31.6 for disclosure of the legally executed deed of assignment. That there on CPR 31.6, it shows you what you can actually do. It's a disclosure. That's what it's called. Uh, and you make sure that, that you know it follows in line with all of the requests from the SAR. Then, to move a county court judgment, you get the default judgment, the CCJ, up to the High Court for enforcement. You would typically use an application form called the N244. This form is used for various applications to the court, including requests to transfer CCJs to the High Court. Here's how you can use the N244 to make this request. Download the form. Obtain a copy of the N244 from the UK government's website or directly from the court where this, your CCG was issued. Complete the form, fill in the required details on the form, be sure to provide accurate information about the CCG, including the case number, date of judgment, and the amount owed. Explain your request. In this section, you weigh, where you explain the reasons for your application, state that you are requesting the transfer of the CCG to the High Court for enforcement purposes. Provide any relevant details or circumstances supporting your request. Submit the form. Once you have completed a form, submit it to the county court that issued the CCJ. You may need to pay a fee for the application, so be sure to check the current fee schedule and include the appropriate payment. Number five, wait for a decision. After you submit the form, the court will review your application and make a decision. If approved, the CCJ will be transferred to the High Court where enforcement proceedings can proceed. It's essential to follow the court's procedure and provide all necessary information to support your request for the transfer of the CCJ. If you're unsure about any aspect of the process, you may consider seek legal advice or assistance. The fee to transfer a county court judgment, the CCJ, to the High Court for enforcement by way of a writ of control, previously known as a writ fieri facias or FIFA, is subject to change and can vary depending on the amount of the judgment debt. The current fee for transferring a CCJ to the High Court for enforcement was £66 if the amount of the judgment is £5,000 or more. However, if it's under £5,000, the fee is reduced to £44. Now, obviously, that's of today's date, which is the 28th of April of 2024. So there's the fees and there's how you actually move it up to the High Court, as well as the list, the checklist to actually file the N1 claim in the first place. So there you now have the actual last notice that you're going to send. That's your template for it. That's your intent to prosecute. Then you have the checklist showing how to actually go all the way down, um, the filing it from the beginning to the end and filing the N1 at the court as well. I would do it all in paper. Don't do it online and send it. Do it in paper and you've got all your evidence put together and you have your evidence pack. 
all of the information you file with the M1, and remember the evidence, which is including all of your requests, that also has to go to the other party. You have to show them what you're going to be relying upon when you go into court. We do see that they're not going to turn up. They're just going to allow the default judgment, which is why we've also shown you the information. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put links in the description for the N1, how to get the N1 online, and also on the N244 as well, where you'll actually be able to apply to move it up in the uh, county court to go to the high court once you've got your default judgment and you have a CCJ. That then gives these high court enforcement officers, these are people with the real power. The bailiffs is a made up word, it's not a real word, you know, people call it a bailiff, but you know, it's a high court enforcement officer, it's an old fashioned word, the bailiff. On the high court enforcement officer, or sometimes an agent, a high court enforcement agent, which is slightly lower than the, the officer, they have the power to literally walk straight into any commercial building and they can clamp it all down until they get their debt paid, which will be yours. Now, they probably just go in, say, right, write the check out, and there we go. So we've got the bailiffs to go and visit the bailiffs. How sweet is that? Okay, so there we are. That, that goes from the beginning to the end on how to actually use it. And we're using GDPR, DPA 2018. We're never, ever going to argue about the debt. We're never going to argue about the validity of it, how much it is. Do we really owe it? Was it a promissory note? Did the bank ever lend you money? We're not arguing any of that. We're not trying to go down that route. They've gave, they have gave us the GDPR, so let's use it. It is brilliant. It is powerful. It is very strong to use data protection. Remember, data is the new gold. It's the new money. So we want to use the data protection. So they are not allowed to conceal your data. So once they've alleged they've got data of you and they said they've purchased the debt, therefore they have to, by their laws, let's call them laws, they have to have the legally executed deed of assignment. So they've actually made a claim, now they have to prove what they have. And they haven't got it. What they have is silly blank bits of paper. So they're not going to turn up. Right. They're not going to go and give evidence that's fake. So they'll allow the default judgment. Once you've actually got that, they can never come and chase you for that debt again. Right. If they ever were as crazy as that, then you will get a, another filing straight away. Boom. But it's not. It's going to be wiped off. And as soon as you actually have that, then what we're going to do is you're going to say, I want that debt now closed down on, on the um, credit file. Because if you've actually got the judgment against it, I would send that in to what is it, Equifax or whatever it is, or the debt um, or the credit filing companies and get that removed as well. There you go. Have a look at the other videos as well. Watch them as they go through step by step. It's going to teach you everything that you need to know. It's going to give you all the links that you need to see uh, and everything is there at your fingertips to actually do your, your own case against the debt collection agencies. See you next time.